Son of Man is going to be tried and killed, but he'll raise again on the third day. We didn't know what he was talking about. We knew that this was Jesus, the Messiah, the one who come to bring the kingdom to Israel. And we thought he was just talking in parables again. He loved to speak in parables. He loved to, to uh, tell a story and let us ask him afterwards, what did you mean by that? And then explain to us the meaning that he had. And so we figured, well, this is another parable or another uh, metaphor. This means something else. And so we went up to Jerusalem. And then there was that, we got close and we came to Bethphage and he said, go over there and, and go to that village and get me a donkey. And somebody comes out and says, what are you doing with my donkey? You say, the Lord has need of him. And he'll say, okay, thank you. And I was kind of uh, skeptical about this. After all, who's going to give up their brand new donkey for just if you say the Lord has need of him? But we trusted him. The two of the disciples went into the town and they came back with this donkey, and I couldn't believe they had it. So they came over, and they brought it to him, we took off our coats, and we laid our coats over the donkey, because we didn't have a saddle, and then people came from all over, it was a great crowd because of, uh, because of the Passover, and people had come from all over the world, and they began to gather a great crowd, and people were cutting down branches out of the trees and laying them on the road, and taking their coats off and throwing them out on the road, and Jesus rode into Jerusalem, we followed him, raising our hands and shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna to the son of David! And this was the day that I had read about in the prophet. The prophet Zechariah had said, Behold, he comes riding on a donkey. And I knew that this was fulfilling all the prophecies that I'd read through my childhood. All the scripture I had memorized, I'm watching it come to life before me. We're going to see the, the kingdom come to Israel. We got to the temple. The temple was filled with money changers. As a boy going into the temple, I hadn't noticed the money changers and the, the sellers and the, the people making a profit in God's house. But Jesus did. They were doing a booming business. It was, it was tax time for the temple, and people were coming from all over the world. They had to change their money to be able to pay the temple tax. And they were making all kinds of uh, profit by using very extreme exchange rates. And Jesus went over and he grabbed their table and he threw them over and he ran them out of the temple. He said, you have made my father's house a den of thieves. It's supposed to be a house of prayer. And then he went and he did what was supposed to be done in the temple. He stood on the porch and the blind and the lame, they would come to him and he healed every one. And the children were dancing around the temple shouting, Hosanna to the son of David and the other apostles and I. <coughs> we were amazed. We just knew that this was the beginning of the kingdom of God. But then the Pharisees came and the scribes and, and my father and the other priests and they said, do you hear what these children are calling you? How can you be so blasphemous? And I saw Jesus face to fall. And I felt the heartbreak in his words as he said, didn't God say out of the, your perfected praise from the mouth of children? And he hung his head and he walked out of the temple and left the city. And the crowd got quiet. What's going on? I thought he was going to start his kingdom. But he's been rejected. People just trickled away as Jesus left town, went back to Bethany, and we stayed there. A week later, it was time for the Passover. We asked Jesus, where should we have the Passover? He said, go into town. Go to the supper room, prepare there, and we'll all eat together there. So we gathered in the upper room, and the meal was ready. Everything was laid out. And we sat down. He began to eat the meal, and he said, I wanted to eat this meal with Jesus so long. And he took the bread as it was passed around. He came around three pieces of unleavened bread wrapped up in a napkin. And he took the bread, and he opened up the napkin. He took the top part, and he laid it aside. And he picked up that middle piece. He 
broke it in half. And he says, this is my body, which is broken, broken for you. I'm doing for the rest of the world. We begin to break it out for each one of us. And we all take it. And then it's time for the, the cup, the wine. And he took the wine and says, I'm not going to drink this until I drink it new in the kingdom of you. He thought, okay, he's going to, he's not going to drink this year. But next year, next Passover, right, we'll have a new Passover. So I'm the kingdom by next year. And so he takes the wine and says, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. 